It's Lollip Effect. We introducing our new adventure brand called Hashtag Just Do It by Timeless. It's a Travel Africa adventure brand, which will be a one-stop center for Africa travel, tours, travel equipments and outfits tailored only. African travel enthusiasts looking to travel Africa in a magical way with GDT by Timeless Inc. Video cut. <laughs> hey, what's up you guys? Welcome, welcome and welcome back. This is Lala. I am Nikki and I'm originally from the US. This is my husband. And I'm originally from Kampala, Uganda. <laughs> so, so thank you for joining us and coming back to see us again. Today's topic. It's about really something contradictory, or so something kind of maybe pissing off or maybe good for other people who are watching. <laughs> but we really want to ask, our, we're asking ourselves and also asking you at the same time, is it that really important for Africans and African diasporans either from UK, from America, to collaborate when they move to Africa? You know, because why am I saying that we all have different experiences you know, when we come, when we're living in the motherland and collaborating with these certain groups of people, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, we have seen so many, uh, even we, we, from best from our experience living within the diaspora community, you know, either in Gambia, either in Senegal, mm -hmm. we, we have seen uh, a lot of complaints coming from the diaspora side of it, saying, oh, Gambians are slow when it comes to time, are slow when it comes to, you know, they don't know that you know, the marketing side of it, you know, the, of the product, Gambians are, you know, different things. And also when it comes to Gambians, Gambians feel uh, African diasporans are, what can I say, are exploiting their land. But in terms of cheap labor, in, in terms of uh, manipulating their economy with their American or European pound, you know. So, these are all things that are really, I myself have different opinions. And I think also my wife has her own different opinions. So, number one, let me first start with why I think African diasporans uh, don't want to collaborate with Africans. Uh, sometimes, for many years, Africans, African diasporans will come to Africa yeah, and set up businesses with Africa, with local Africans. They end up at times falling into things like being scammed. A lot of diasporans, oh, they're going to need to see and hear this. Y'all going to appreciate me telling y'all the real deal about coming out to the Gambia and coming to any of these countries. I know I can speak for myself, but this is a problem that you guys have here. Y'all live hand to mouth, but y'all have a scam, con, artist culture. Can't nobody even do business with y'all. Y'all don't know how to do right. Y'all don't know how to do right until somebody's just your master and giving you little scraps. Is that what you want us to do? Because the way you treat people, the way you act toward each other, you can't even trust each other. See, this is what's behind all those smiles. Uh, trust issues with the locals where they set up these businesses. Okay, for instance, an African diaspora has money. Has come with money to set up a certain maybe to buy a certain plot of land to do a farming or a certain business. Mm -hmm. The local person here sees that as an opportunity, not an opportunity to collaborate for a better future, but an opportunity to grab something. It's like hit and run and go. These are things that real, are really really happening throughout all countries in Africa. That are, it happens. You know, but I believe that. You can't put that on everybody. Mm, exactly. What I'm saying is, yes, that has happened. And I understand yes. why you're saying that maybe that's the reason why. Yes. I think people also really realize that there's so many people who are ready for that challenge. Yes. But... Yes, there are so many who are ready for that challenge, I mean locals and foreigners, yeah. African diasporans. Yeah. But we have to really analyze what brings this bridge, what brings this gap. And that makes the collaboration difficult. Because for real, we're using Gambia as an example. In Gambia, there are so many uh, misunderstandings. We have experienced you know, 
from African diasporans who are living there, mm. saying how they really have hard experience when it comes to working business with the Gambians. But do you think there, there should be a system set up? I think for me, uh, what do you think, first of all, you know, as who's watching us? State agents. Now, that's probably really peculiar advice from those of us who are coming in from um, um, America or Canada, yeah? Because you would expect that if there's a safe uh, outfit to buy from, it would be the estate agents. But apparently, uh, the estate agents over here are known to sell land to foreigners, land that they don't own. When they say they don't own it, it means they haven't got the clearance for the land. So what we need to do to ensure that the land that we are buying, the estate agents have clearance for, we have to ask them to show us their, uh, uh, capital. Ca their capital gains revenue certificate. Yeah. It's a tax income clearance, tax. income tax clearance certificate. Yes. This is what they need to show us as evidence that they own the land that they are selling. If they can't show you an income tax clearance certificate, it means they haven't paid the tax. And if they haven't paid the tax, then the land is not yet cleared for sale. Okay. I think for me, it's, the problem is one, you come from the African, from the diaspora. Some of you have never collaborated with any blacks in your society. Mm -hmm. You come into the new society in the Gambia, where some Gambians have never collaborated with a foreigner. You know, you're coming with money, with an idea. A Gambian has an idea, but has no money to implement that idea to work. Yeah. So when they come with this, most of the times, some African diasporans try to install a certain way of work to the locals rather than finding a way to bring it like a, a learning course for a Gambian and say, okay, all right, in my country, this is how we do business. Mm -hmm. In your country, this is how we do, you do business. Mm -hmm. How can we make sure both sides can emerge together and, you know, and survive? Mm -hmm. Give an example for time. So many African diasporans out of Gambia, when they come, those who are used to that, you know, the Western life where mm -hmm. things are about time. When you say I want the job to be done this time, and it's done with at that time. But in the Gambia it's different where uh, when you say I want the job to be done on Tuesday, the job don't be surprised the job be, to be done on Sunday. Because that's the mode of conduct when it comes to Gambia. It's the mode of conduct, it has to do with it really has to do with where you are. Because it could be anything. It could be transportation problems. It could be, you know, that's one of the biggest, is transportation problems. Mm -hmm. You know, getting to where the job is, getting the job done on time, having the materials you need. So it also could be just the person's work ethic. Yeah, and, and another thing is, uh, uh, we really have to be frank with you, honestly. In Africa, some Africans really do not know something like, I can't do this. Yeah, that's true. That honest truth of saying, I really can't, you know, if, given example, I've seen African restaurants who come with project ideas and they want to implement them to, in, an, in an area where they are. They collaborate with these Africans and they tell them, no, I can execute this, I can execute this. So he will take your word or she will take your word that you're really going to do the job. You can execute the job. And then she invests in or he invests in his money. At the end of it, what happens? It's either you run away, being scammed, or either all that money can go to waste because you gave them your word that the job is not done properly. You can't do it, but you can rather say I can do it, but I'm eager to learn how to do the job because there's there's so many things that African Africans know, look Africans don't know. There are so many things that some local Africans know, but some African diasporans don't know. For example, I seen like in the Gambia again. I use the Gambia as an example because we lived in the Gambia. We see uh, African diasporans who are working with the Gambians. Either they're employing them, either they're partners with them. Where when African diasporans come to Africa and they start up these businesses, they employ locals. They don't employ African diasporans. 
you know, they employ mostly locals because at times <clears throat> maybe it's something they would love to to connect their business to. Of course. You know, because they are they're here, they're living here permanently. And it gives employment. Uh -huh. It generates a lot of job opportunities, the revenue back to the government. You know, that's the you see how beautiful it is to collaborate. You know, because collaboration can not only be business partnership can be also in giving you know jobs and yeah. things like that. I did see one um, where they were starting to implement um, job training. Yeah. Because that's another thing you have to Thank realize. You. There is not always job training. There is, you know, I once learned about, um, they have a school for hospitality. Yeah. Everywhere you go, you can tell the difference between people who may have got you know, trained in hospitality versus people who didn't get trained in hospitality. Yeah. You know, those are big things. So, because really, uh, it's we just have to accept. If you are from the diaspora and you are used to a certain kind of service, and you come to a country which is struggling to develop, like Gambia, like even I'm just using Gambia as an example, but multiple countries here in Africa, there's a culture shock that you will receive. And at times, if you have the energy and that morale to make a difference. Give an example, you go at a place, the service is poor, and you think, okay, I think, how can I make a difference here? Can I start up a business that can train people how to do a certain kind of business or execute a certain kind of service? Yeah. To improve, you know, to improve something. I mean, that's a contribution you're doing. You could do it. I just really think that truly, so working on the collaboration is important. It's important. At the same time, I don't blame those who say I don't want to collaborate with foreigners in general, whether it's Chinese, whether it's African diasporans, whether it's Senegalese, and you in Gambia. There are many people who have those reasons. Yeah. You know? But the best thing is collaboration is so important within the African community, you know, within the black community, because it just helps when it comes to sharing experiences there's so many things we don't know about African diasporans. Yeah. I would love to know. There's so many things. My wife, she's from America, you know. But there's so many things I didn't know about black Americans. And really, now I know. But also the fact that, you know, that's how you learn about what's really going on in the country. It's through the locals. Through the locals, Because yeah. some things are happening. Even the fact of an influx of, you know, diasporans coming to actually relocate it changes their livelihood a lot and if we are aware of all of these things that are happening some that are maybe detrimental mm -hmm. we can help also in a different sector a lot if we've already come together to collaborate a lot because trust me these governments here you know they are looking for ways to generate taxes from from various projects so you will find where they have various projects on, you know, out there where they're trying to look for who is ready to mm -hmm. take them up, you know, and an African diaspora comes in and then they win them. So they will not say, no, you're African diaspora, no, no, you, or you Chinese or you Lebanese won't give you this project. If they feel it works out for that government, they won't care about you, the local. They will still go on with, the, with their project and they will make money. So means you're going to be left behind. You see the collaboration, but if there is a collaboration between both entities, if it's forged, there's so many things a local can know how to go around, where a foreigner does not know at that time. You know? And you have knowledge, or you have money, you have a source of income mm -hmm. as a foreigner. Mm -hmm. This local has a knowledge of how to do things around, has also the benefit of the language. You know? Together, when they emerge, they do a lot. There's a lot, so many projects you could do together. All based on honesty, trustworthy, you know, and really accepting to learn. Yeah. I don't know, I'm wrong on that? Mm -mm. So what do you guys think? Do you think it's important for Africans and African diasporans to collaborate when they come here? Or everyone should just do what they do, you know, if it's possible, they do if it's not possible. Because still there are some African diasporans who come here and they become toxic to the environment. Yeah, because it can also <laughs> work as you just even investing in someone local. Yeah. You know, if you're you're a digital nomad, a 
digital person who's working online mm -hmm. and living abroad, you might want to, you may have met someone who, who has a business, but again, doesn't have the money to start it up, mm -hmm. or there's a business that wants to upgrade and they don't have the extra money to upgrade. You can invest with them if you guys come up with an agreeable you know, situation, yeah. um, understanding. So it's, it can be easy as, you know, even just that, but we must collaborate, we must work together. Yeah. That's the only way that the division between the two is going to come together and be better because then you can learn from each other the things that you don't know about each other. Because that's the real. That's one of the biggest things. <laughs> that's what brings a big problem here yeah, because at times when we think, we think as blacks <laughs> in Africa, we same same with the blacks in America. No, there's a big I mean, difference. We think the same coming from you know <laughs> wherever we're coming from. We it's there's still a difference. There's so much we don't know about each other. And we can walk onto various projects accepting the differences within us. That's the within our community. Thing. You know, okay, I'm working with this yes. kind of people. This is the this is what they do. Be understanding Understand from both it. sides. Yes. Because still, you may find some African friends who come here and they, you know, they mess up their friends, they scam their friends who, who come here. You know, they sell them fake lungs. It's survival and, mode, guys. So. Survival mode sometimes is detrimental, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. So yeah, we have to learn how to do that. We really, we're ready to hear what you really think about that. It's something that was on our mind and wanted to put it out there. Yes. To hear from you guys. What do you think? What do you think? Collaboration between diasporans and locals, wherever you are. It doesn't matter which country you're in. Collaboration, no drama. Collaboration, no drama. Collaboration, uplifting each other. That's the main thing that it should be. Not to say it's not going to ever have any problems. Differences? But let's try to figure those differences out and fix them for the betterment of us who are coming for a better life yeah. and then people who are local to where they are also for a better life. Yeah, because if it's I, a benefit on both sides. That's what I was going to say, you know, because uh, we have to work this thing out because at times we're losing opportunities. And if you did not work around this, time is going. Things are moving. We will be left behind. Either you're an African person who was failing to collaborate with you know, and the opportunity passes on you, either you're African diaspora, it will pass. People will come here and do projects because of your ego, you have felt it will be left out. You don't want to be on the outside, <laughs> you don't want to be left out. We need to come together, for real. Egos on the side, <laughs> the new Africa. All right, thank you so much for watching our videos yes. and uh, we hope you learn a lot. We hope you made it to the end. <laughs> and if you did, thank you so much. <laughs> we love you. Don't forget to like, Always. share, yes. and subscribe. Yes. Ruben, Lollop Effect. <laughs> Till next time. Big Thanks up. So much.